Okay, so here we are in the Centro Comercial in Guadalmina, and today we're going to explore Guadalmina, but also San Pedro. We're going to go down to the beach in San Pedro, have a look at the promenade, have a look at some of the, uh, the developments down there, and then we're going to head into the town itself, the town of San Pedro, and uh, get to grips with it and see what's going on, see what sort of amenities there are. So yeah, little tour around San Pedro and Guadalmina today. Morning, Alfredo. Morning, Sean. How are you? Very good. Another sunny day in paradise. Very and sunny. A, and a sausage sandwich in my belly. Oh yeah? No. We'll How was your um, hog, pork, no, hog, what was it? Full English breakfast. Full English breakfast. We've, we've been to a little place called Tricky Ricky's. Anyone who knows Guadalmina will know Tricky Ricky's. It's the, the only place to go to if you're after a full English breakfast or a sausage sandwich or a beans on toast. British. It's British. Goodness. As the owner says, Real food for real money. There's no cards accepted. It's oh, cash, oh, right. it's cash okay. only. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been sat there many a time, stuffing my face and realizing I can't pay for it. So we are. I'm going to show you San Pedro because you're not too familiar with San Pedro, are you? Well, I, I, I spent my whole life on the Costa del Sol. I grew up here. Yeah. And I've never been to San Pedro. I've been past San Pedro, oh. and I don't really know anybody that's been to San Pedro or why they would go to San Pedro. And I have some perceptions. My perception oh, of San okay. Pedro is that it's a, it's just another town, Spanish town not really somewhere you'd visit or want well, to visit or... let me educate you then. So this area we're in now is kind of a whole new area. This this bit didn't exist. Well, it did exist, but it used to be the, the main road. So they, they built a tunnel going under this part of town, which takes the, the body of, of traffic away from the town. And this is the new boulevard. So this took years to be built. Mm -hmm. And obviously the recession came along in 2008 was it and then the whole thing got delayed and eventually it was open and the tunnel was open and everyone thought wow amazing and actually it has transformed San Pedro now so this promenade section it offers obviously more parking there's um, areas where people can have exhibitions and concerts there's also a few bars dotted around and kids play parks it's really it's very very nice and what it does that's really important is that rather than having this big main drag for the traffic it connects the lower part of San Pedro, which is the beach area, to the upper part, which is the town. So it means that you can now walk across and walk to all the different parts of San Pedro without, without getting mown over by, a, by a, an Arctic. Um, what we're going to do first of all, so we come to this, this is the main roundabout really, you see the wavy bridge, I call it the wavy bridge. <clears throat> Try not to run somebody over. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have it. Um, so I'm going to show you this area to the right. Actually, it's probably on the left here, isn't it? Which is um, the new area. So this is kind of Nueva Alcantara. So the town is called San Pedro de Alcantara. And this is Nueva Alcantara. So this is the new bit. And this has become very kind of foodie. There's lots of restaurants and bars. So it, it actually rivals a lot of other towns on the Costa del Sol. If you have a place here within walking distance, you've got a lot on your doorstep. But it's become quite kind of foodie. There's a few very high-end restaurants here as well, which is nice. So there's a mixture of, of all sorts. You'll see that there's a lot of land. Here is a plot that's owned by Taylor Wimpy. What, what, what's going on over here? Apartments and penthouses. These were the ones I was asking the sales director of Taylor Wimpy about um, last week when we saw him in Istan. And this is a great location. It's a nice plot. Again, it's walking distance to town, walking distance to restaurants and bars, walking distance to the beach, which we're going to go to now. And Taylor Wimpy have done a lot of development in San Pedro. They've built three developments here. One is Los Arqueros Beach, which we're going to sort of as we come back, we'll look at. Another one is Aqua, which is right next door to Los Arqueros Beach. And if you didn't know, you wouldn't know which was which. And then they've also built Jade Beach. I think San Pedro, for anybody who hasn't been or doesn't really know much about it, yeah. one thing that they've got wrong is it's the marketing. You've been here five minutes. The marketing. You're, you're slagging it off already. It's the marketing. It's like a stone's throw away from Puerto Banos. It is. And you they call this off San Pedro del Alcantara, which sounds like it could be in Mexico. Yeah. Well, this is beautiful over here. It's beautiful. This is beautiful. This is, you don't really hear much about any of this area, do you? Okay. So, let me tell you. The nice thing about San Pedro is it's very flat. So, it's a bit like, like I said, I think, a year or two ago, that the, the big sort of hot property markets in the Costa del Sol were La Cala and San Pedro. And the reason for both of them, really, is that you can walk from the town to the beach and from the residential communities. It's not on a massive hillside. And it's true. So, this is, this is where I'm going to retire to. When my legs just can't take the weight of my belly anymore. I'll be just wheeling myself around here. So October time-ish. <laughs> In about half an hour actually. 
No, this is great though. I've never been here. Oh, I've, never, I've, I've been past here a million times. Yeah, never. so we've got really well-known developments like Las Adelfas, which is a beautiful development. Um, the thing is about San Pedro is you have to decide whether you want to be more the beach or more the town. And the problem we have at the moment in San Pedro is because it's part of Marbella and all the licensing issues that we had, there's a lack of stock. You know, there's a lot of empty land here that, that needs to be developed because there's a almost a waiting list for stuff in San Pedro at the moment. And because of that, the prices are high-ish. Um, so there's a little bit of an imbalance. It seems a little bit like they kind of skip San Pedro and go straight to like Estepona, don't they? When you're thinking yeah, about yeah, Marbella, yeah. you think of up to about Nueva Andalucía, Puerto Manus, yeah. and then the east, and then you kind of go a little bit of amnesia, and yeah. then you start in your head with like, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the east part of Estepona. And this yeah. is... San Pedro was always a place that you kind of just bypassed. You know, until that boulevard was built, I wouldn't have ever gone there. Um, but when it was built, you kind of thought, oh, I'll stop off and have a drink, see what it's all about. And I spend most of my like social life in San Pedro now. But th these are mostly low-rise apartment buildings, aren't they? That's, that yeah. seems to be, there's not really villas as much from what I can see, although there are some, some it looks like. Not, yeah, not in this area because the land prices are so expensive. So most developers, if they have an opportunity, uh, they will build. Um, it seems that there's a lot of like three, four, two, or two or three story apartment yeah. developments. Yeah. Not particularly new, some of them. Mm -hmm. No, no, they're not, no. And the ones that are new, like Jade Beach, for instance, well, I say it's new, it's probably about five or six years old, they attract a premium because obviously they have a better spec. I'm just taking you up here, up the alley, because I thought we'd do a little shot of the, the beach here. And someone's left us a nice little parking space. How's that? So this is part of the San Pedro uh, beach and promenade. And along here you have, oh, I can't count them, but probably 20-ish. Uh, restaurants and bars, so loads to do. You can cycle along here. It's very, very safe for kids. And there's a couple of my favorite restaurants. One is Calacalua, which is just up here. And then the other one, which is Nuevo Reino, which is another one just, just here. They're two really good ones, but lots and lots of choice. And again, from here, uh, you can walk, fairly flat walk into town in about 15, 20 minutes. So something for everyone in San Pedro, very family friendly, as you can see people walking their dogs and pushing the kids and stuff like that. Uh, the beaches here are good, it's not the Caribbean, let's be honest, but decent sandy beaches. And from here you can also walk to Puerto Banus, or cycle to Puerto Banus. So it ticks a lot of boxes. So you just asked me who lives here, and yeah. I would say that it used to be, traditionally used to be the Spanish who maybe worked in Marbella or Puerto Banus, but because the um, housing market there is normally quite inflated because it's popular for second homes, they would pitch up here instead. I think now, because it's had a bit of a, a renaissance in terms of its look and feel and what it offers, it's now uh, really cosmopolitan. Second home ownership is probably the biggest player here in terms of type of type of buyer. But as I said before, there's a lack of stock. So we've, you know, we've just been dealing with a client who was just priced out of a place here. It was too difficult to buy and they've ended up going to Estepona because there's more new developments, there's more choice. Um, but I don't think you can stress enough just how close to Puerto Buenos this is. It's, you come, you basically pass Puerto Buenos, go in a tunnel, and you, you appear here. Are you, do you work for a political party trying to get it called Puerto Buenos too? Just in marketing, I can tell you. <laughs> it's just, why you not? You really think they've missed a trick, don't you? Uh, there's a massive paddle club and gymnasium up here as well called IO. It used to be the San Pedro um, Paddle Club, but it's uh, it's very, very nice place, and that's on the doorstep. But as you can see, there's, there's lots of land here. Yeah, there's tons of parking as well. There's t tons of parking, absolutely, and it's all free. There you go. So we're gonna go back up the road we came down because that's where most of the things to see are. Um, but it, no, it's a lovely uh, a lovely place and very. it always feels very safe and it's very family orientated. 
I think because there is that mixture of Spanish and local residents and then obviously the, the expat and second home uh, brigade. So I'm going to whiz you past the development that's called Jade Beach, which is one of the more recently built developments. It was a Taylor Wimpy project. And uh, I think when they released them, they were sort of 400,000 plus, and everyone was like, goodness, that's quite expensive. And now, you know, two beds in here are 600,000. So this is it coming up on this, uh, this side here. Let's have a little look. So very contemporary, you can see compared to the, the other stuff that's a little bit closer to the beach. This is probably second line beach, I would say, but very modern lines and construction, and it's proven very successful. So small exclusive development. We had an inquiry about it this morning, actually, from a, a client in the UK. It feels very spacious, the area, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You don't feel that claustrophobic feel, you feel it's some other parts of no, the coast. No, exactly. It's, um, I think because also you've got that, that land that hasn't been developed, so it's not as if they're piling everything in on top of you. It's nice that there's no high rise, is there? There's that, no, you know, no. other parts of the coast. It's that's, I think, as high as it gets, the building just so over like there. Six, six stories. Just, I mean, that's yeah. just heading more towards the main road in there. But this is the new Town. foodie section here. So if you look on this side, right. there's all sorts of bars and restaurants. There's tapas. There's... Um, is this where you come for? Yeah, I do, actually. I come here quite a bit. Tanino is very good. I go there quite a bit. And then you've got... Um, Lovely steak restaurant. You've got Jim Junkie Cafe. So anyone who likes a protein shake and lean protein-based food, that's great. Urban Bistro Bar is great if you want to go and watch a bit of sport and have a burger and stuff like that. Then you've got Benisti, which is good. You've got that's a good steak restaurant. I went there the other day. Da Bruno is a good old favourite. I go there quite a bit. So yeah, there's I mean there's probably in total seven or eight just along this strip before you even hit the the town proper. But as I said before, what this boulevard has done in this area is it's linked the, the, the two areas so they've become one. And that's because they've lifted basically all the through traffic out of, through, yeah. well, put, put it through the tunnel. It's all underneath now, yeah. Right. I mean, it can still get congested because obviously there's, it's, a, it's a town and uh, at certain times of the day, but they've improved the parking because it used to be San Pedro had no parking, so you'd just be driving around for hours trying to find a space. And now it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run you to the end of the boulevard and then we'll dip into the into the town itself and I'll show you some of the sites. There's anyone who likes a pub quiz, which is a very, very British thing, isn't it? I don't know, is it popular in other countries, a pub quiz, do you think? I doubt it. Anyway, anyone who likes a pub quiz, there's a fabulous Irish bar called the Hogan Stand, which actually does really good food as well. And they have a pub quiz every Thursday night. Irish not being part of Britain, though. <laughs> I think well, if a few people may disagree. <laughs> well, there has been, because I know the lady, uh, Hannah, 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 who uh, does the quiz, she also is the, um, she's on Talk Radio Europe, and I know she's had a bit of a hard time from some of the Irish punters in the Hogan stand that she doesn't do enough questions about Ireland as she's, uh, as she's in, in an Irish pub. But um, anyway, most of her audience is British, but... <laughs> Getting a bit political now, mate. Not only do you want to rename the town, it's come on, it's next to Puerto Banos and San Pedro de Alcantara. It's like Don Juan de Marco or something, isn't it? It's, it's, <laughs> you know, <Mexico>. Who? <laughs> <laughs> so, four restaurants down here. Albert and Simon is good. Bit so, hoity toity. Honestly, you're moving in, I can tell. I, lo I love it. You're on the phone, you're on the you phone know, to the when wife. When you go past you're Marbella moving. and you're going towards the tunnel thing, you think yeah. so it does get a bit congested with traffic, particularly at peak times, yes. in and out. Yeah. You're going into Puerto Buenos, going out of Puerto Buenos. They still have that area. This bit, area yeah. feels congested because of that. Yeah. But when you actually come into it, yeah. it's quite, it feels quite nice and spacious. The, the big criticism of the locals is that they did this, this whole underpass tunnel thing and oak, the, the boulevard to avoid congestion at the bottom of the Ronda Road. But look, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but you see the traffic that's piling up there? Oof. Now that is a daily occurrence at the moment. So they still haven't sorted this issue out and it just drives us all mad because, as I say, that was done to, to avoid that. But there's lots of roads that don't work some of the exits and inlets onto the a7 don't really work as they should anyway that's a town planning issue so here we go so here's like the the, the town itself on this side um so you've got residential and you've on the ground floor you've got restaurants and bars and 
different shops and stuff like that. Nueva Marbella. There you go. You're welcome, Mayor. Nueva Marbella. There you go. You've cracked it, haven't you? Yep. Add another 100000 onto your property if you've got one in San Pedro. Call it Nueva Marbella. Job done. Thank Alfredo. There's the Hogan stand. Oh, that's the Irish. I've British. had many a uh, good night in there. So here on the right is the town proper. This is the town proper. I know you're eager to get in there and see. I'm just curious. It's just no, just hang on. Hang on. Right, it used to be that you could drive in through the main street, but... As, you can't. But you can't, because it doesn't <laughs> exist. No, because, like in a lot of towns everywhere in the world, they've made it pedestrianised, which I think has actually taken away a little bit of the soul. It's taken away a lot of the nice traffic fumes and stuff like that, but it has taken away a little bit of the kind of madness. Oh, okay, so there is an old town to it. Yeah, there is. What, yeah. What, how old is it? Like 1995 or something? Like <laughs> how old can that be? Now you're being facetious. Well, as old as you want it to be. Shall I, shall I, I haven't brought the Wikipedia about I'm surprised the way about the Marbella that. with me. I'm surprised so that's the, that. up there is the pedestrianised bit. Okay, that looks quite nice. It, it, it is. Stop sounding so surprised. It's busy, busy, hey? See, I like a, a town that's teeming with life and... And there's all, I mean, you could actually pitch up here and you wouldn't need to go anywhere else because you've got everything you need. You've got banks, supermarkets, Loads and loads of restaurants of all different types, bars. What else do you need in life? Mm, hairdressers. In fact, the best hairdresser in town, Howard's on the left here. Owned by a guy called Glenn, who um, was a stylist in London. A mobility scooter shop. Mobility scooter shop. Thanks for pointing that out. You sure you work for the tourist board? And you've got the, that, slot, well, the slot machines. When we do know on my rigger, that's going to go. <laughs> yeah, that's too. Got This bookshop's been around forever. Shakespeare. Oh, if you look inside, there's no room. It's just books. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. But it's kind of like a, you've got to go. So this is the, the hotel, the NH, in San Pedro, where I've put a few people in the past. That I didn't want staying with me. I'm only joking, in those 24 hour pharmacy. Quite what, Spanish, though, isn't it? Well, it is Spanish. It's, a lot of it's, Spanish people, it's very it? authentic, which is good, you know? It's got some great ice cream shops, as you can tell. Actually, so this is the, the main bit here we're going into. There's my bank. God help them. So, left and right. Which nobody can see. <laughs> which nobody can see at all. We should go up there. Okay. Because that's a lovely little spot. It does look nice. You can see the sea from over here. Mm. This is like a typical what would have been a small seaside town. Yeah. Judging by the little townhouses yeah. and things. And people like that, don't they? Yeah. People like the authenticity. Because, yeah, you know, it's all very nice seeing something very glamorous and blingy and blah, 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 blah. blah. But actually, people want authenticity and they want to see yeah. how people live. And this is still quite genuine, I think. So this is the, the main square in San Ped, which had a bit of a makeover a couple of years ago. I'm just going to take you up this bit up here, which kind of moving out of town slightly. But... You'll see where it all kind of links up and where we are. I like this street, actually. I do like a tree-lined avenue. I'm a sucker for a, for a tree. <laughs> so Bella's famous for the school, the private school here, some Laude. Laude. So Laude is down by the beach, where we've just been. And there's some lovely little Spanish schools as well. So you've got, again, you've got a good mixture of educational offerings. I mean, I've got a good friend here who lives just off the main square there. She's got a nine-year-old boy, goes to the local Spanish school, the other side of the square. And they have a lovely life. You know, they've got everything they need right there. And again, the school is, is good. It's well run. Um, it's safe. So we're heading out of San Pedro. You see, this is a new build. And eventually, just at the end of the street, we come to the roundabout that can take you back down to the coast right between Puerto Banus and San Pedro or you go up the Ronda Road. Right and, and there's a there's a, another good thing with, with San Pedro is um, that there it's right next to a very handy link to the toll motorway. Yes. 
So if you don't want to go through all the hustle and bustle of Marbella and Puerto Banos exactly. on the A7, you just link up to the AP7 yep. and uh, you're off to wherever you want to go. This is the uh, the junction of the of the Ronda Road just coming up, where you would go this way now up to La Zagaleta and Los Oqueros, La Quinta, the back of La Quinta, and then down to uh, down to the coast basically, and you can access the back okay. of the back of Nueva Andalucía. So, do you think we should try and find somewhere to park to do a little bit on that pedestrian? I think section? we should, because I can't believe they went years and years and years without charging people for parking on the street, didn't they? I mean, in England, it's happened like 20 years ago, didn't it? But here, it's only been a, a recent, well, fairly recent, I would say three or four years phenomenon where you park and you... I mean, it's not expensive here. That's the, that's the thing. It's pennies. And what I love about this place is that if you go over time, you just pay a little fine, but in the same place, you don't get stung for like 60 quid as you would back in the UK. It's just, again, it's like a euro or something, you know? It, they, it's almost like, oh yeah, you know, sometimes people are delayed and sometimes people, you know, so rather than find the massive amounts of money, we'll just, yeah, just pay, the, pay whatever you owe. Much better system, isn't it? What I do love here is they don't charge you over siesta though, do they? They don't charge you between 2 and 4.30, yeah. which is just fantastic. Uh, right, I'm hoping we're going to get parked down here, but I don't fancy our chances. All these little boutiques. You think, how the heck do they make money? But I guess they have a, you know, a local Spanish... Like, a lot of people probably won't leave San Pedro, will they? I know that uh, my friends, like, uh, that her Spanish friends, they don't, they don't go to Marbella, they put to They don't th want to get ripped off. And... I think, I think uh, what you also have, having Puerto Banos so nearby, when there's no traffic, is you've got the huge Corte Inglés right there, haven't you? And it's, yeah. What, must be from here. It must, without traffic, it must be 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If that. So, we are just, just going to show you the main street in San Pedro. So this was the bit here that's now been pedestrianised. Um, so there used to be lots of parking, lots of action and chaos, and now it's all pedestrianised. So it it's a, feels a lot more genteel and calm. And they've got some lovely shops and bars and restaurants. And then if you spin around, you'll see the, the older part of town. And we can take a little walk up here, which is a lovely place to stroll around and see what's going on. And again, also good for a night out or for a lunch. Lots of uh, lots of options. So on the left here, they're setting up one of my favourite bars, which is I, don't even, I forget the name of it, but it's actually one of the Dutch bars here. So it's owned and run by Dutch people, and whenever they have the is it the King's Day in Holland? I can never remember. They always go mad here, and they have a, a Dutch menu. And then at the top, near the square where the church is, there's also another Dutch bar. So there's two very well-known Dutch bars here in San Pedro. I think the reason that I like the Dutch bar so much is that next door is the best ice cream shop. It has like about 100 flavours. So, and what they do is at the Dutch bar, they let you like have a drink and have a meal and you can bring your ice cream from here and sit at the table back with your friends. I mean, it's like bliss, isn't it? And in fact, this street is just, they should call it after me because I love those things. And I also love Granier, which is like a, it's a chain of um, cake shops, isn't it? Like a Greg's. Like, <laughs> like a Greg's. Is, is, it, is it, is that what it's known as? But it's, it sells like really nice cakes. Yeah. So if you fancy a, a Dutch menu meal and an ice cream and a cake and a bit of sushi over there, you, you're covered. I think you need to film that window because that is not Greg's. Excuse me. I cannot believe that you you thought this is like Greg's. I mean, come on, Alfredo. When have you seen this in Greg's? And so it just goes on. The same stuff, really. Lots of just lovely bars and restaurants. Just bars and restaurants, isn't it, really? You can see it's, I would say it's 60, 70% Spanish, but the rest of it is, is very cosmopolitan. And um, just up there, you've got the church in the square. 
So everything is very easily accessible and then you head south and you've got the beach and the boulevard. So yeah, it's a really cool place. And a lot of people, as I say, they end up staying here thinking they're gonna be using Banus and Marbella all the time. And they're just quite happy with their lot here. It's got everything you need. Alfredo, is it just me or are people like really busy here, like doing jobs and stuff? It's, I need these guys in my house. <laughs> oh, he'd maybe walk up that big long street. So this is the square, the main square. Always in Spain, the main square will be the one with the church in. And this is a lovely church. This is where they have all the Easter processions. I was actually here a couple of months ago for the Easter, the Easter marches and processions, which was fabulous. And the main square, really family friendly. Kids are safe there. Lots of restaurants again. It's a nice place to be. So here we are in the main square in San Pedro. I did actually want to get Alfredo in here when it was turned off. But anyway, at least the kids are having fun. And this is the main church behind us in the square. a little whiz out of San Pedro, just along the, the uh, western side of the boulevard, and then I'll take you into Guadalmina. So, oh, Guadalmina does sound quite posh, doesn't it? <laughs> it's just you don't I, like San Pedro, but, do you? No, I like it, but I don't like, I don't like the branding. I, say, I, think, I think Guadalmina, that is in Marbella. Are we, are we leaving Guadalmina as Guadalmina then? As, as the new mayor, you're not going to change that? No, but I would, I would, I would, I would, I would not write Guadalmina, comma San Pedro. I would be Guadalmina, comma Marbella. Marbella, yeah, yeah. The end. Well, Guadalmina is the last bit of Marbella, isn't it? Before you Before hit you, Sabona, yeah. Uh, well, you get to a, a little... Like a river, no? It's a a little point. crossroads where you've got Marbella, Benavis and Estepona all there. Right. So I used to live right in the bit where it all met. It was very confusing. San Pedro is part of Marbella, yes. but it's its own like subtown, if you exactly. like. Exactly, yeah. Or district, I guess yeah. it would be a similar... It's considered big enough to kind of have a little bit of, or, yeah. of autonomy within Marbella. Yeah. And then Guadalmina, which is where we're going to now... Is just is a, a suburb of Marbella, really. It's a suburb of Marbella, mm -hmm. and geographically it comes just after San Pedro Town. Yeah. But you don't see San Pedro Town when you go from Marbella to Guadalmina, which is what I like. Because you go through the tunnel, I'm pop out the tunnel, and there it is. Yeah. Where was San Pedro? Who knows? Oh, it, Who cares? It was there, somewhere. Somewhere in, in Mexico. In the, yeah. <laughs> it's true, though, isn't it? That's why I don't know it. Because you, oh. you come from Marbella, you go in a tunnel, and you come out in Guadalmina. Yeah. You, none the wiser. I yeah. think this video. I think honestly, I think you're going to be a politician within six months. I think all this, all these Dromelia boys and your Dom, your Maro brothers and all that. Honestly, I think people there'll be a petition at the end of this today. To shut us up. To shut us, yeah, <laughs> shut us down. Just drive around already and stop. <laughs> You'd be like, have you two got nothing better to do? No. <laughs> well, I mean, as I understand it, there, there isn't a, well, I mean, a town, there is a shopping center of sorts. Yes. By the side of the motorway. Yes. And that's the nearest thing to a town center that you have for Guadalmina. Guadalmina, Because yeah. it's, it's a residential urban, is it? Or is it, it residential it is. area, so it, Right, so Guadalmina, let me tell you what Guadalmina has. It has uh, a golf club called Guadalmina, funnily enough. It has two uh, courses, one of which goes all the way down to the sea. It has a couple of hotels. So it has the Guadalmina Hotel, which is quite famous, which is on the beach, which is lovely. And it also has the Barcelo Hotel. So two, two kind of four or five star hotels. And it has the golf club and it has the commercial center. And, and the motorway splits, essentially splits yeah. Guadalmina Baja, yeah. which is lower Guadalmina, and Guadalmina yeah. Alta, which is exactly. higher Guadalmina. Exactly. And broadly speaking, as I understand it, the Baja is the 
because it's the beach side as yeah. it tends to be it's bigger houses with more space posher yeah. and the north is still nice it's still houses yeah. slightly smaller and slightly more affordable absolutely right should be the stage Guadalmina Baja is very noble in terms of like the Spanish the wealthy Spanish love Guadal but love Guadalmina Guadalmina Baca in particular I mean it's home to ex-prime ministers and things like that of Spain so it's very kind of revered in terms of an area so, so often you'll you'll go to some of the best restaurants in Guadalmina I'm not a fan of eating in a car park on the motorway but hey ho but you'll go past there and there'll be quite famous sort of nobility Spanish nobility eating there because they just love Guadalmina and would it be fair to say that the Guadalmina Baja is like you say sort of with the old money Yep. and wealthy people yep. had traditionally had homes yep. and the Alta is slightly more modern and it's more middle class Northern European Absolutely. type of thing. Yeah. And the prices reflect that. So we've just had a client who's a lovely client who's just uh, relocating with his family and they've bought a beautiful villa, Guadalmina Baja, on a, a nice flat plot. No sea views particularly, but they spent over 4 million euros on that. I and mean, that's what you have to spend because the land prices are so much more expensive. And so Guadalmina then borders with the east part of Estepona, the new Golden Mile, as it's called. Yep. So you have the Golden Mile. Yeah. Then you hit Puerto Buenos. Yeah. Then you hit San Pedro. Yeah. Then Guadalmina. Guadalmina, and then it becomes a new Golden Mile, which is the, part of the, 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 the eastern part of Estepona. Yeah, exactly. Right. So we've just come down the little link road from San Pedro, the exit from San Pedro, just goes, takes you straight into uh, Guadalmina. You may have seen a little peak of the golf course there. Here's the, the sign welcoming you to the area. We're in Guadalmina Alta here because we've got the, the motorway on the side and then below that is the Guadalmina Baja. And we're gonna just whiz you around the commercial center or shopping center or whatever we wanna call it today. Just so you can see what's on offer really. So this would be a commercial center, wouldn't it? Because yeah. it's not really a shopping, you know, it's not shops, it's a supermarket. No, it's shops and it's businesses. I mean, we had an mostly, office here, yeah. It was mostly Real estate agencies, yeah, it is isn't it, to be fair? So, Pane Chocolato, which isn't open today, closed on Tuesdays, uh, but it's a lovely little place for lunch. Uh, there's a wine store, Japanese, Italian, bank, mm -hmm. Tricky Ricky's, which is where we started our tour this morning, news agent, you've got a little Spanish restaurant, you've got a, a, a Pescador, which is a, a fish restaurant. That's a and famous. Famous, Asador. So what this guy mean? is as right wing as they be, as they as they get basically he's the guy that when they introduced a smoking ban in restaurants he defied it and he kept getting fine after fine after fine and his punters paid paid all this fuck soho market it's a new phenomenon phenomenon so you rent out space in there so it's like a shared retail space and you rent out a section and share the proceeds or whatever i don't know how it all works but uh, they're doing phenomenally well. There's a waiting list of people to go in there. And whoever's got the bar in there has made a fortune because every night it's packed out. Uh, it's the place to meet for local people. Well, the thing is, uh, uh, this is obviously not gonna get used, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm not Excuse supposed me. to eat crap Excuse food. It's supposed this will get used. This is what the <laughs> this is what the public wants from us. Clay room floor. <laughs> I'm on a diet. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, COVID hasn't been uh, good for my belly. But I figured it's a little bit like you, you know the song "Hose in Different Area Codes." I'm in a different area code from where I live, so I think that the diet <laughs> rules don't really apply, so and I can just pick out what happens in Guadalmina stays in Guadalmina. Exactly. Yeah.